Hey there, Tim Whalen here from Whalen Jazz Lessons, and in this video I'm going to give you six concrete steps to get the most out of your transcriptions. As teachers, as students, we always hear the words, go transcribe, but then it's like, okay, I did that, now what do I do? It's a pretty overwhelming thing to figure out what to do with all that information, especially if you uh, transcribe an entire solo. It's like you're not going to take whatever you learned from the solo and just take the whole solo and input it into whatever it is you're playing. I remember when I first started out, the first few solos I did, I was kind of like, is that what I'm supposed to do? Like, <laughs> if I'm playing a blues and I transcribed a blues, it's like, do I just take all this and put it in the blues? And as I realized, that's really not how, how it works. So this video is much less about transcription, it's more about how to practice and how to get the most out of the things you practice. The point of learning vocabulary, learning solos, learning voicings, learning lines, it's not just to learn the actual music, it's to let the music show you all of the concepts that are within it. This is why learning theory can be really beneficial, because when you look at the things you transcribe or you play them, you'll be able to say, oh, that's this concept, or that's this concept. So theory on its own doesn't really do too much, but when you combine it with learning the language and hearing it, that's when things really come to life. All right, so let's dig in. I'm gonna do a two, five, one line in D major. It's taken from an etude I wrote over the tune Tune Up. And it's actually part of a packet I made called Jazz Warmups and Etudes. And you're welcome to grab it in the description if you'd like. The link is below, completely free. So let's play the line. So that's the line. I'm just keeping it simple in my left hand just so you can really hear the line without voicings underneath it. Here it is. So that's the line. D major, 2, 5, 1, E minor 7, then we do an A7 sus 4 to 7 flat 9 flat 13 to D major. Okay, let me play it one more time. Okay, so the six steps. Number one, learn it on your instrument. And sing it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but singing it will really internalize it. Two, transpose it into every key. Three, analyze it. Four, this is a big one. Break it down into smaller chunks. I call them fragments. And transpose those fragments into all keys. Number five, write it down. Number six, apply it. A lick on its own is just a lick on its own. Step one, learn it on your instrument. I've already done this. That work is done. But this is an important thing, because there's schools of thought about this. Some people have said, well, just get a pen and paper or pencil and paper and put the recording on and use it as an ear training exercise and learn it away from your instrument. That's beneficial, but we're trying to learn how to play. The only way you're going to do that is by playing. This isn't a theoretical exercise. Step two, and this is probably the biggest one, transpose it into every key. Transposition, in addition to having good rhythm, I think are probably the two most important skills you can have as not just a jazz musician, but a musician. The goal should be to not have any bad keys. So here's the line again. Okay, well, I should be taking that around. Let's do a few more. One more, how about key of B flat? Okay, so transposition is really important. It's like, how am I doing that? Well, this is an important thing to think about. Transposition is not just your ears. It's not just hearing it and moving it around. The best way I can describe being successful at transposition is it's a combination of your ear and your intellect. It's understanding keys, intervals, arpeggios, key
key signatures, scales. Like, that's why we have to know these things. Because I can look at this and say, oh, there's that, there's that, I know what that is. And then you can put them together and you see them in the other keys. And I'll get more into that in a minute. So when you transpose things, you can transpose them in a few different ways. Circle of fourths. Um, by key, that was the key of D, let's do the key of G. Key of C. Let's do one more, key of F. You can transpose chromatically both ways, by whole steps, by minor thirds. I'm not gonna do all of them just because of the length of the video. I still have bad keys, by the way. I suck at the key of A, I don't like the key of B, but I work on them and they're getting better. And it will never be a journey that ends. <laughs> Step three, analyze it. You can analyze this in two ways. The first way is the musical elements. What are the functions of the chords that you're, that you're playing over? Is it a two chord? Is it a five chord? Is it a one chord? Is it a six chord? Whatever it may be. The second way is to analyze all of the music elements that are being used. Are these enclosures, arpeggios, scales, bebop scales, are these half steps, intervals, triads, like all of the musical elements, what's the rhythmic content? That's the other way to analyze it. So if we're gonna analyze this musically, first of all, this is a two, five, one on a key of G. E minor seven, A seven sus four to A seven altered to D major. So it's a two, five, one. Now that we know the function of the chords, we can analyze the melodic vocabulary that's happening. And the way to do that is to use numbers. Use numbers based on the chord of the moment. So the first chord of the moment is E, main, e minor seven. So if we analyze the melodic content, and also I'm only using scale tones, I'm not using extensions just for now, so I won't be using 9, 11, 13, just beware. Two, four, major third, two, flat three, five, flat seven, two. And then we've got two, four, six, flat six, three, one. And then two, seven, one, three, five, seven, flat seven, six, flat six, five, three, four, five, four, three, one. So rather than that first E minor seven chord, rather than saying two, four, major third, two, flat three, it's, it's just an enclosure around the third. I know that's an enclosure. So I, I know what that is. Right, I know enclosures. So when I see it, I can do it. The second part of that is just a, it's a major seven arpeggio starting on the minor third of E minor. It's five, three, five, seven, nine. That's a minor nine arpeggio, very common in the language. So I'm using my intellect to know that. The next part, it's just a minor triad starting on the two, which I know will spell out a sus chord. Then it resolves down to an augmented triad, which I know spells out a dominant flat 13 chord or a, some sort of augmented chord. hear that movement. So when I hear that now, when I'm in different keys, you know. Okay, and then this last one, this is just some common bebop right here. I mean, that is everywhere in the music. That offbeat triplet, everywhere, everywhere in the music. And then I know bebop scales, so I know it's starting on the seventh, we're gonna have half steps going all the way down to the fifth. And then this is another very common ornamentation. So this lick is teaching me enclosures, arpeggios, triads, triplet ornamentation. You could take those concepts and just say, I'm gonna work on this triplet ornamentation and I'm gonna apply that to my own language, okay? So, so much to be taught here. Step four, break it down into smaller chunks and transpose those chunks into all keys. I want you to think of the lick as an iceberg. 
So check this out. Look at all of the things that are coming from this 1251 line. I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 different things from a four bar phrase. When you get into the smaller chunks, you can see what one of my mentors, David Hazeltine, called the syntax, the syntax of the music. Take each one of these or anything you're learning and learn these smaller chunks in all the keys. I'll just do a couple of them. Okay, that was one of them, all right? How about one more? I'll do something on major. You get the point. Step five, write it down. This isn't even really required or necessary. You could just do all this by ear. A lot of players have done that. That's awesome. I like to write it down for a few reasons. One, it helps me to visualize it to see it. It's, it's helps me to analyze it when I can see it on paper. Also, I write it down only after I've completely mastered the phrase or solo. And I just, that's when I write it down away from the instrument, because then it really shows me that I've internalized it. The other reason I like writing it down is I have a record of something I've done. I go back to stuff from years ago, old transcriptions. It's like a well of things to kind of teach me what I could practice. Sometimes just opening up an old solo that I transcribed or some old lines and be like, oh, I kind of forgot that line. I can kind of bring it back. Um, so it's really nice to have a record of it. For me, writing it down helps with analysis. I prefer to write on pencil and paper. It's a little more tactile than using the computer. And a lot of studies shows that pen and paper, pencil and paper helps with retention. So analog, I'm all about it. Step six, apply it. This is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. You've got to be able to take what you've learned and start plugging it into your own vocabulary. That's when it comes to life. It's not just about learning something and you know, not incorporating into what you do. This is how you find your sound. This is how you find your style. And I like to do it with something I call the runway method. If you think about whatever language you're playing, as the runway. In this case, I'm gonna use the, on the five chord, okay? That's my runway. If the runway is here, you're over here. Play your own vocabulary. You wanna land smoothly into the line. And what I mean landing smoothly is you wanna resolve by steps. You don't wanna be playing a whole octave away and then jump down to the line. You wanna be able to move into the line with a smooth stepwise resolution. Play the line and then resolve out of it in a smooth stepwise, res stepwise resolution. If you do this with this language, any language, you're not only staying creative because you have to play your own vocabulary, but you are really learning resolution and connection. And that is the key to becoming a successful improviser. Resolution and connection. Let's try uh, applying it to Autumn Leaves. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna try to apply it to every five chord in a major key. Okay, so basically all the, the F7 chords in B flat major. In D minor, or e, G minor, the D7, I'm gonna do some other stuff, but keep your eye out for it. I'm gonna do my best to resolve by steps. It's not always easy but I'm gonna try it. We're gonna go slow. Here we go.
So that wasn't awesome, but you get the idea. Again, it's important that you see the people doing these videos. They also have to work on this stuff too. We're always working on this. The reason I showed you doing that is so you know that we're all doing this together. We all have stuff to work on. So don't, don't beat yourself up. Just keep trying your best and apply it. Apply this stuff. I promise it'll help. One final thought. I get questions, should I learn a whole solo? I don't think it's necessary, but it's certainly helpful. I mean, I've learned a lot of full solos in my musical career. It's extremely beneficial because learning a solo is where you're gonna learn how to play. You're gonna learn swing feel, you're gonna learn time, you're gonna learn articulations and accents and just all the nuances of playing that you don't get just from playing on your own. The more you transcribe like that, the more it seeps into your playing. In terms of learning actual language, you know, there's gonna be a lot of filler in an entire solo. There's, you're not gonna to wanna to learn how to play everything they do. I mean, maybe you do, but in my experience, it comes down to like, there's certain things that have always resonated with me and then there's other stuff I can throw away. But doing a whole solo gives you an overall arc of the solo. Um, and like I said earlier, it just really helps deepen your musicality inside of the music. Something I like to do is I'll take a solo and I'll start listening to it. And basically the minute I hear something that grabs my ear, I'll learn it. And then maybe I'll write it down and then I'll keep going and I'll learn it. So whatever, whatever it's, so it's basically like a, it's almost like a highlight reel of that solo. And then that's when I do the analysis. I'll learn whatever little piece I learned. I'll make sure to say, okay, well, this was like a 3625 on that form, or this was uh, some modal thing or whatever it is. And then that way, when you start to apply it, you can apply it with context. Whatever you do, the goal, I think, is to always break things down into smaller ideas. That's where it's going to make the most sense in terms of what you can put into your own playing. Hey, if you liked what you saw today, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you really want to support the channel and subscribe, that would be incredible. Um, but really, thank you for watching. And if you haven't gotten it yet, check the link below for my jazz warm-ups and etudes. It'll really help expand your vocabulary. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.